The worst drought for more than half a century in the US may be peaking, but some experts say that its impacts may still not be known for months. Joining me to discuss the market implications is James Dunsaville from AgriNews in Geneva. James, thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, I understand um, you had previously quite a bullish outlook with regards to corn. Um, could you tell me how the uh, drought has affected your outlook and why this is? I think we still have to be fairly bullish on corn uh, generally, but we have known the, the problems with the corn market in, in the US and, and the drought now for some months. And so uh, for the, those trading the fundamental markets, we'll have already put a lot of this into the market already. So to say now that we need more uh, bullish elements to come into the market is probably true to push the markets even higher than where they are now from a big increase that we've seen over the last few months. Okay, now some experts say the drought itself may cost the US economy more than $50 billion. How would you compare this situation to perhaps the drought in 2007-2008? I think uh, to, to look at uh, numbers like that is, is perhaps uh, not my field, but um, the, the difference between uh, then and, and the drought we have now with the corn is obviously we have a much increased demand for ethanol and uh, the uh, industrial products that we didn't have in those days and uh, this is going to impact a lot on what's going on. Plus it's not only a US drought problem that we've got, we've seen droughts in other commodities like wheat across uh, Eastern Europe, Russia, and we still have to see what happens in South America and Australia uh, in their growing season that's only just coming along now. Okay, and with regards to um, Geneva, how do you think the drought, the drought will impact trade there? The impact will, will be uh, seen. Um, you have to understand that, that, that Geneva is not only a trading uh, hub for many of the companies, but it is also a logistics. The companies here do a tremendous amount of logistic work moving grain from the producers to the consumers. And obviously if we have a reduced export uh, demand because we have lower stocks, then we will see that these companies are moving much less goods or they're involved, the banks, the inspection companies are involved with smaller volumes and this will impact them on their bottom line for sure. So um, many large investment banks have distanced themselves from any sort of food-based commodity funds um, amongst fear that speculation may lead to a food crisis. Do you think this is appropriate action and if so would it be enough to, to avoid a food crisis? I think the, the food crisis is, is more of a political than, uh, than a, a, a real dilemma. Uh, we have enough stocks in the world to supply those people who can afford to buy the stocks. Um, if we are looking at a political uh, agenda that we will have more starving people and uh, there will be less people being able or more people uh, having a problem getting food, then yes, we can, we can say that we have a food crisis. But the food crisis, uh, as far as the, those that can um, buy the food, use the food, we will not have a food crisis. We did not have a food crisis in 2007, 2008. We had people who couldn't have food, but it wasn't because of lack of supplies. It was lack of money to pay or lack of political will to give them the food. And with all this in mind, do you think there is still money to be made from corn? And obviously there's a crisis on one hand, but there's opportunity on the other. What, what do you think? I think the, we still have an opportunity to, to see the, the, the well, when you say uh, is an opportunity to make money, we can make money on both sides of the fence. We can also be bearish now on corn and make money by going short rather than being long. But I think that the market will remain where it is, but it may not be necessarily a corn reason for seeing the prices increase, but maybe turning to wheat or other commodities that affect the corn price to push the prices still further up. Okay, so what is your sort of short, mid and long term look with regards to maybe corn or wheat? Would you say? I think we have to look uh, now at uh, the South American crops uh, for corn out of Argentina and Brazil. We have to look at the wheat crops out of Australia. These are all crops that are, are growing, so Mother Nature will be very important for us. Whether we see an El Nino again for uh, Australia, which could bring down the wheat production. Um, I think we must also remember how fast 
our production can change from being a disaster because we've had a weather problem to seeing farmers planting extremely fast, extremely big acreages. And if we get the weather, we will soon be in one year back to having very good stocks again and the thought of a, of a food problem will be over. Okay, so do you think perhaps the worst is yet is still to come or do you think we're over No, the I think we've seen the worst mm -hmm. um, and uh, the potential to see the markets rise now is probably smaller than we saw in two months ago, but uh, there's nothing to say yet that we should uh, see a bearish market. The market is going to remain firm, but the big increase has probably already been done. James, thank you very much for your outlook today. It's been very interesting. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, sadly, that's all we have time for at the moment, but do stick with Dukas Copy for all the main news from the TV team. For now, though, goodbye.